Okay, so hopefully many of you have been to my website, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. When you go to filmsbychris.com, it automatically forwards you currently to filmsbychris.com, or redirects you to filmsbychris.com forward slash V7. I get asked sometimes, what does the V7 stand for? It's, it's version 7. Which is just an estimate, because I didn't start numbering the changes, the updates to my website till version 4, and I was guessing that I was at version 4 at that point. Uh, but we're currently on what I would consider version 7. I've been on it for a while, I'm very happy with my current design, and that's what we're going to look at today. So this is my site, you come here, you see this, and actually I'm going to click on here and basically refresh the page. After a second, the page automatically scrolls down and gives focus to the search bar here where you can search through my videos, uh, not only from my main YouTube channel uh, that you're currently watching, but my second YouTube channel. Um, so I can type something like Doom, and it'll bring up all my videos on Doom, and it filters as I type. Uh, I can say Grep or Android, uh, or I can say Nmap. And so there's certain things that are important to me when it comes to, to programming. Um, first of all, if you have something that has a list of things and there's more than 20 things in that list, or definitely if there's more than 50 things in that list, you should be able to have a search feature, and preferably, um, I like it to filter as you type when possible. In fact, I plan on doing like a whole series of filtering lists in different programming languages. Uh, but it's very important to me to be able to quickly, as I type something, as I'm typing, the list changes, and I can see what is available. Um, so... That's it, pretty basic, pretty straightforward, but we're going to look at how that works, and um, obviously, this is a web page, it's using JavaScript, uh, which some people uh, dislike JavaScript, which uh, really, there's, I, I disagree, I, mean, I understand some aspects of people not liking JavaScript, but usually it has to do with bad programming, not JavaScript itself, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit here, uh, but don't worry, don't worry, because it's not that hard, and I have provided provisions for you, many provisions, for those of you who don't want to access my website with JavaScript. But first, let's look at the JavaScript and look what it's doing and look at why I wrote it, how it wrote. First of all, the main part of this page, you're probably coming here to search through my videos. Originally, when I designed this page, when I say designed, I used a template, but when I set this page up, this is what loaded and you saw this. And of course, it's, it's um, you know, it's, uh, whatchamacallit, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, where it uh, it resizes for mobile devices. It's I'm drawing a blank on the word now. I use Bootstrap and it resizes the page. Whatever, it will come to me later on when I'm done recording this video. Um, so anyway, it used to load to this, which is nice. You see that you're at Films by Chris, and it gives you some options in the menu here. But really, then you'd have to scroll down. To here and then you'd have to click into the search bar here. What I set up was after one second, so if I was to refresh this page, the page loads one second later, it scrolls down the videos and also gives you access uh, to it, takes focus to the search bar. I hate web pages that the main point of them is to type in a search bar and um, and it doesn't give focus to that by default. I actually use this um, this plugin for Chrome here, uh, Vimium, which gives you key bindings. They're similar to Vim, and I can actually type uh, when I'm on the page. If we're not in an input already, I can type in GI, and it automatically brings me to the first input on the page, which I use all the time. But I think uh, if the page is properly designed, it should automatically go straight to the search field uh, if that's the main point of the site, or whatever the first field is, if there's fields to be filled out, and that's the main purpose of the site. I'm not saying every site needs that, but if that's the main purpose. So again, I press F5, it shows the, the top, a second later it scrolls down and gives you focus to this, and you can just start typing. I don't need to grab the mouse and click, or even spe press special keys to get to that search field. Um, so let's look at that real quick. I'm going to open up the code to the page, and... I'm just going to search down here to ready. So, okay, so when the page loads, I actually, this is probably not the, the most efficient way to do this, but I just set a timeout that waits one second. After one second, it's going to set an animation to scroll to the top of the video section. Pretty simple. I told it to do it slowly. You know, you can set different speeds. And then as soon as that's done, or even at the same time, it's going to then take the search field and set focus to it. And that's it. Two lines of code to do that with, uh, you know, wrapped in a timeout function. Great. 
So how does our search work? And also I want to show you our, my search in this case is not a smart search. Um, so actually let me show you here. If I click on uh, probably software here and I scroll down and I click on notes, that actually brings you to another page where I didn't set. Now, I'm actually breaking my own rule here and I need to change that. Uh, this is all my notes that I put on Pastebin. Every day I have a cron job on my web server that grabs the newest Pastebins that I have posted, puts them into a database and loads them here. And I'm not saying that my code is the best because this code is actually very, very horrible. But it still works. Uh, currently there's 100, uh, 601 entries. And here I can type in things like Android. And this is where you can go and look through a lot of my codes. Whenever I take notes or write codes or scripts for stuff that isn't a big project that goes on GitHub, if it's just a short script, I put it in my paste bin and I put a link here. i much rather use, um, uh, what is it, Gist. But uh, I actually created this before Gist and it's just set up so I just haven't changed because then I'd have to move all my code over or rewrite this to look at both sites anyway. Uh, as I type, it works fairly quickly, fairly quickly, I say, because, again, I wrote this absolutely horribly, but it's not searching just through the title of the, of the um, uh, objects, of the uh, notes, but it's actually searching through the scripts, too. So I can just say something like Churroot, and you can see Churroot isn't in the title of most of these, although it is in some of them or even most of them, but some of them not like this first one, it doesn't say that. Because when I click on this, it brings me to paste spin and it shows me the code and it's actually searching the word, but I'm doing it all on client side and not only, uh, so really this should have been done, I have everything in database, I should be sending requests to my web server and it's going to then go through the database and return what I'm looking for, but that's not what I did in this case. If you actually look at the code of this page, oh, well you're not gonna see it here, I'll bring up the developers bar, because that's the code before the code runs, it actually queries and grabs the title and the entire content of every single script. So let me click on one of these elements here. So you look here, and you can see it's a, it's a anchor tag with an H reference. But when I open it up, you can see here that we have the title, and we have some div tags here. And uh, let's do another one right here. So here's an example. I'm actually loading every single one of these scripts into your web browser. So there's an example where it's not just the JavaScript, but the fact that I'm just doing it poorly. <laughs> and it shouldn't be done this way. This is just how I wrote it originally. Because uh, now you, everything's done being done on the client side. Once the page loads, it grabs everything. It's all done on client side, which is sometimes a good thing, but not when you have this much information. Uh, really, uh, this should all be, be done on the server side. But, you know what, on my desktop it runs fairly well. Again, I can type in Android. And you can see it's filtering the list fairly quickly. On a mobile device, though, it will take three to five seconds for the list to filter. Not the end of the world. But again, that's an example of, um, I could have done this better. And it's not even the JavaScript, but the fact that I'm loading everything in the web browser, and it's a lot of text for your web browser to filter through, and the JavaScript's filtering through it, where it should be done with a database on the server side using PHP or some other type of programming language, uh, but using the database rather than flat text file that's been loading into your web browser. Anyway, so here, here, here's an example of where I'm, I'm breaking my rules. It doesn't autofocus and it's written poorly, but good enough. I wrote this for my personal use and I just posted it on my website for you guys to share. So again, if you want to go through the code on my page, if you click on software, it brings you down here and you can go to my GitHub page where my larger projects are, uh, scripts. Oh, brings you to example scripts on my website. So that's stuff that's actually going to run on my website and notes is basically all my paste spin that you can search through. Um, and actually, let's let's let me see here real quick. Network, all reload, and you can see right here, right here, get that PHP. It's actually not that big, um, but it will be over time if I keep using this. Oh, <laughs> keep clicking on that. Don't want to click on that. Uh, I mean, it's a quarter of a megabyte. It's actually not very big for loading. But searching through, it's a lot to search through in your web browser after all that's loaded. So again, just giving examples of not saying that I am the best program in the world. Sometimes you just do what works, uh, but you can't bring, blame the programming language when it's written improperly. Anyway, going back to my website here, let's go back to the code here. So 
here when the uh, page is loaded, so the document is ready, uh, anytime in the search field the key is lifted, so you press something and lift up, it's going to run a function uh, to search the videos. But before that, let's look at this get function here. This is doing uh, a request when the page loads, and it's looking at a file called current list, current.lst. Uh, and again, a lot of what I've set up on my website, I set up many, many years ago, and I would do it again differently if I was to do it now, but it works. So even, even when I'm doing things poorly, it's uh, working uh, fairly well. And what I mean by that is, th in this case, I actually am using server-side code rather than client-side search through stuff, um, but I'm actually using flat plain text files, not a database for any of this, uh, which is not the end of the world. It's not that I have 2,000 some videos and it's only searching through the titles of them and returning the, um, the, the uh, ID for it on YouTube and then loading up the image here. But we're not gonna look through this greatly, but you can see we're splitting out a pipe. So what, what is happening here when, when this loads? So this is a current list, which is just a list of my last, I think like probably 20 videos. So my newest 20 videos uh, will be loaded here. I'm gonna refresh the page so it's at the, you know. So I think it might be it might be 20 from both my channels, so it might be 40 videos altogether. But it just loads those up uh, so that you right away you see my most current videos from both channels. But as I said earlier, uh, anytime you type something and lift your key in the search. Bar, it's going to do this search video, which is this right here, which is basically doing the same thing as this, but looking at a different URL, it's actually going to look at the video search.php. So actually, if we were to take this and we were to go in here and type in, uh, so filmsbychris.com forward slash uh, v7 forward slash uh, video search PHP, we'll click that, and it actually is going to load up all my videos because we didn't put any search fields in there. I don't think I put a limit on how many videos it returns, but we can do uh, question mark Q equals nmap and hit enter and it actually will filter out uh, and it's not giving us line breaks in the browser here. If we were to look at this as code or as a source code, you can see what it returns. And what it's returning is the title of the video because it's looking for anyone that has nmap in there and then it's returning the ID for YouTube. So uh, let's go back to my page here and uh, talk about this a little more. So again, I was saying, uh, I didn't make this a smart search. So I can type in something like wolf and you can see it brings up my two videos on the wolf web server. I can type in wolf web server and it filters it, but it's not smart enough that if I was to, if I was to type in just web server, it's gonna bring up all my videos to say web server and you can see the wolf ones right here. But if I was to type in web server wolf, it's, it's not gonna come up because it's not a smart search. It's looking for exact matches. So it, it's not the smart, where on the other hand, if I was to go back to my software section here and click on my notes, I actually have it smart enough that I can type in something like Chirrut Android, if I typed Android right. And so it doesn't matter, it's, it's looking at the words and it doesn't matter what order the words are in. Uh, I can even do, you know, parcel ma matches. I can do, you know, that and that and you can see there is a like a one second delay when I'm typing stuff here because it is again doing all in the browser searching through the entire code of every one of these scripts um, but it's a little bit smarter it's not super smart it's not like Google algorithm smart but it's a little smart I didn't do that on my on my home page here just because I didn't bother doing it because I think like if I type in doom it's only going to show so many videos you know I think probably one of the longest ones I you would type is like something like Python probably would return a lot of videos and then you gotta go through all these. But at the same time, you can, if you're looking for something in Python particular, you can type it in. So like, um, if I wanted JSON videos, here are my videos on JSON. There's only two that return. So that's why I didn't bother taking the time for doing like a super smart search with all this. Um, but it's usable. I think it works great. Even on mobile devices, it works pretty, you know, quick and responsive. Um, even, even, like I said, I, I my my test for when I write stuff like this, I go to Walmart, find the cheapest tablet, test it out on there, and if it works fairly good, it's good enough for this. But again, some of you may not like the idea of JavaScript uh, in the web browser. Uh, again, 
it would be this. If I didn't do it like this, what you would have to do is you would have to type in Doom and then click enter or search and the whole page would have to reload. And I hate that. I hate when websites are like that. So although there are people who out there who are, I just like JavaScript, I'd much rather just have the plain HTML on a web page, I completely disagree because I think that's very inefficient to reload the whole page when you could just be grabbing some text from the server, requesting some text from the server and loading up what you need from there. Uh, and it's also just quicker, more efficient, cleaner, whatever. But here's the thing, like I said, I have options. So you saw that we could go to, you know, our, what was it, um, was it video search? You could do that. Don't do not do that though. That's, that's, you could go into your shell and type that. So let me go like this, go to a shell, say w get and put in that code and it would, oh, I do want to just display the output on the page so you can see and then I can say make it quiet. And I get that, I get these lines, and that works, but, but I have better options for you. So first of all, as I said, I'm just grabbing stuff from some text files. If you go to my website, filmcircus.com, and do forward slash site data, there's a folder in here with actually some files that are old and I need to remove, um, but there are three main files in here that you might want to look at. Current list. So again, this is my last... I don't know, I'm going to say four. I think it's 20 from each video, 20 from each channel, I mean. So if I was to take this, I can do quiet. Oh, yeah. So there's the list. And then if I was to word count this, 80. So yeah, uh, so it's 40 from each channel. So by default, uh, when my page loads, you get the lady eight, 80 latest videos from both my channels. Uh, so again, that's what happens when you're in here, and I just refresh the page, the first 80 videos that show up are actually just being pulled from that plain text file, this right here. So you could, if you wanted to see my most current videos, you could just wget this file, this URL here, or, or curl, or whatever program you want to use. Uh, and once a day I have a cron job that checks my channel. So if a new video posts today, it may not show up in this list till tomorrow, depending on what time it posts and what time I have the cron job to set up, which I don't even remember because I set it up many, many years ago. Then we have a, a playlist, which I don't even actually use on my website, but this searches through all my playlists. And it's up to date. Uh, if I was to search for 2008 here, you can see their playlist from 2008. Uh, and again, it's separated by a pipe. So all you need is this, and then you can, you know, go to the YouTube channels from there, the playlists from there. Uh, so currently, I don't have a playlist search on my website, which I used to with the last version. Um, but the, the file's still there, and it's still constantly updated. Uh, you know, we got some old test files. Um, the actual, this is actually a copy of the script that runs in the cron job. If you want to see how it works, it pulls stuff from my website. So if you want to manually on your site or on your own computer, pull my videos uh, from YouTube, you can do that. But I'm already doing that on my website and you can just grab the list. And then of course there's the video list, which is all the videos on both my channels, filtered, sorted, um, and uniqued. So I can grab this and I can wget dash q dash uh, capital dash this and I'll get that list and if I word list it yeah just over 2,000 videos is in this list are in this list and you can manually grep through this so I can grep and probably dash i for case insensitive say doom and I can find all my videos that have doom in the title you know and, and then if I wanted to filter it down I can then grep dash i cheat and there you go, here's some custom cheat codes video. So all you have to do is, you know, this is the, the ID for this. Uh, so for example, if I was to go back here to my page and I click on this, you'll see right here, there's, you know, an ID goes there. All you have to do is grab that ID from the other side of the pipe, pipe it in there, and it will bring you to that video. So again, if you are a, um, you know, using the shell and you want to script this out, you know, you could do something like this. Uh, so this will return all my Doom videos, but I could also say cut uh, with a delimiter of pipe field two, and I get all these IDs, and then I can say while read L or ID or whatever I want to call it, echo done and Oh, I always forget to do that. Do. And I can grab this. Put it there. 
say dollar sign ID. And now I have links to all these and I can do whatever you do. I actually have code set up that I can use hotkeys to select a video, boom, and there we go, we're at that video. So again, if you're into shell stuff, there you go, that is one way to do it, but not the only way. So I've shown you, you know, there's my web page here, um, and then there's also uh, the, the files, the plain text files that you can just pull down with wget or curl or whatever you want, you can do that. Um, but there's actually cleaner ways, and again, it's all about good programming, even when you're not the greatest programmer in the world, like me. Um, so what happens if I try to go to my website, Films by Chris, in a text browser, so like links, and I say filmsbychris.com, of course i got to spell my own name properly. I go like this, and here it loads, you get redirected, it loads, and you can come down, and you still have your search field, but if you try typing in here, nothing happens because I don't have a submit button and it's using JavaScript for those submits. You're like, oh, well, this, this site, it doesn't work. It doesn't work when, uh, you're, you're, when you're working in a text browser. Well, again, I've set things up for you. If you look up in our menu options here, actually, let's go to it in the regular browser, and menu options here, there's a shell option. <gasps> look at this. A very basic setup of the same thing that doesn't use any JavaScript. And I made it just for you guys, because I know a lot of my viewers are probably those people who don't like JavaScript. And so in here, again, it shows uh, some of my most current videos, just a few of them. It doesn't show the full 80. And in here, I can type in Doom. And again, I have to hit Enter uh, before it loads. It doesn't filter as I'm typing, because there's no JavaScript in here. Everything's done on the server side, and you're just getting plain text output. Uh, I can say Grep. And I'm also not setting focus. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way to do that with HTML, um, but normally I do it with JavaScript, so that's why it doesn't set focus there uh, and map. So there you go. But not only that, you, you know, that's this in links. So again, I can here I can just go shell and I can wait for it to load and I can type in Doom, hit enter twice. I can type in grep. And there you go. So there you go. You got your text-based web browsing. Uh, you can also, once you you know that that exists, I can use, let's use W3M, just to use a different browser here. I can just do forward slash shell, and it'll bring me straight to that. And I can type in, uh, oh, I haven't used W3M in a while. What do I press to, uh, oh, I just hit enter. Okay. I, I'm just using Doom because I know I have videos on Doom. There you go. So same thing. And also at the top, it gives you notes here on how to use it. So in case you're using W3M, make sure you go to filmcircus.com forward slash shell. But it also shows you here with wget and curl. Uh, so, again, I have created things to make things easy for you. If I was to quit out of this, and I was just wget dash q dash oh, so basically this means quiet, and then the output just is displayed rather than going to a file, and I type in filmsbychris.com, what happens is it actually gives you, and you may not like my theme, but instead of just uh, plain text, so the other way, you know, I could grab uh, wget, you know, here is my video list, or I can do current, let's clear the screen, current, Oh, uh, it'd be good if I spelled current properly. There you go. So here I can do this and I can search through the videos like we were talking about, dash I doom. Oh, there's no, that's my current videos. We'll just say chip. So there you go, you can do that. Uh, but if you actually just wget my homepage, it gives you instructions on how to use it with curl, which we'll use next, and with uh, with wget. Again, you may not like my t color scheme, but I gave you colors. I automatically add the URL in there for you instead of just returning the ID. So this is actually probably a better option than unless you can pull the list entirely if you want, but if you're actually going to search through it, you might as well use this. So curl dash capital L films like chris.com forward slash sh uh, shell question mark Q for, for query equals and then what you want to query. And again, it's not a super smart query. It's the same as before. Um, but it gives you you know, the titles over here, which blue probably isn't the best option on a dark background. And then the titles in red here. So you can actually just, if you wanted to, do searches like this. Uh, Doom. You can even do partial matches like that. And then if you have code set up like I do to go through this, I can select a video like that one. 
and it loads. Man, my volume is way too loud. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and, again, I set it up so that my website knows. It knows when you're coming from wget or curl, like this. Instead of loading the, the actual page, it forwards you to the shell page. Uh, you know, it gives you your little title here. It tells you how to use the page with both wget and curl. So, so in case you were one of the people who watched this video and maybe you don't see the shell link in the menu, if you try to wget my page, it will give you instructions on how to use it with both wget and curl because it knows that you're using wget curl. It checks your user agent, says, oh, you're using curl or oh, you're using wget unless you've changed your user agent and it makes it easy. So. To set up this to where you can access it from the shell here using curl and wget or w3m or links uh, was very, very simple. It took me maybe a half an hour to do it total to make sure that it ran properly with all those, you know, you know, with curl and wget and that it detects when you're using curl wget and a color code stuff, which is probably unnecessary, but I felt like doing. Um, it really didn't take long at all. So one of my points here is JavaScript is not that bad, which is always one of my points. Uh, <laughs> let's go back here. Uh, I personally, one, especially when you're working with media like this, it's nice to have the pictures, but obviously you're not going to have that in the shell unless you're using a browser that overlays them, which I always just uh, looks confusing to me. But I like lists that filter while you type. Um, and that's a big thing for me to have the filter to have it again you in the shell you can pipe to grep type to grep type pipe to grep as much as you want which is great but if i can search while i'm typing and i am going to show you how to make a very basic shell script in a future tutorial that will as you type filter a given list um because when you have a long list i think that's just awesome to be able to do um but my point is, I made this. This works great. This is not that much code. So again, uh, ready. So this is the entire uh, JavaScript that I wrote. Obviously, I'm using some libraries. I'm using uh, uh, Bootstrap and jQuery. Um, but this is the code I wrote. That does everything on the page. Uh, there are a few things in here that I uh, that I didn't even go over. Um, but uh, mainly clicking on links and stuff like that but to search through videos and really a lot of this code is repeated up here and could probably be put into a function and cut out some more code but why it's short already um, and even though my server side is just using flat text files which in this case it would be bad if you know I had millions and billions and millions of things in the list but a couple thousand is not that hard for a computer to search through and it's being done on the server side and loaded up to your browser um, it's not that much code. It didn't take that much time to write. Uh, I used a basic open source template for my website, a free template. Um, you know, I think one of the hardest things I did was uh, writing code that when the title of the video is too long and it was causing the videos here to be un unaligned because it was making the words go down to a new line, that I set it so that they're limited to a certain length and then they do dot, dot, dot. Um, other than that, it's all very basic stuff you use all the time. Um, and I think it's great to have both options. Uh, some people out there, I'm not going to call out any names of other YouTubers who constantly bash JavaScript, don't have JavaScript on their web page. And, and I hate that if, if there is a search field, like it's, I have over 2,000 videos, oh, I have to type doom, hit enter, just like I do on my shell here doom and hit enter I want to be able to just start typing and see it filter as I'm typing even if it was just a plain text list um, to be able to to have that to where I can type and filter it's just so important to me it's to me reloading the page every time you want to do a search is just ridiculous and I'm sounding like a broken record now it's just oh it's just so no don't do that anyway that's my website if you don't like JavaScript, I have options for you, multiple options. You can, again, if you just go to uh, filmslikechris.com forward slash site underscore data, that's where I dump these files at. 
And again, I need to clean this up because there's some files that are many years old. Uh, you can go through those. You can pull them at your leisure. I do ask though, and you know, I'm guilty of this too. I watch a lot of my videos, my YouTube videos using something like WPV or some other uh, uh, video player just because I like it better and, and I don't want to have to load up the browser just to watch a video. But at the same time, you know, if you do enjoy my videos, it does help if you watch my videos on YouTube because, you know, I get likes and hits and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm not telling you have to, just saying I appreciate it. Uh, but definitely, you can pull down the full list and archive all my videos to your, your own server if you want because um, I, I provide the lists for you to do that. You know, this video list right here is just a list. That way you don't have to scrape YouTube. I do it. If you want to scrape my YouTube channel, again, update.sh is right here. It's a shell script that does that for you. And you can obviously change this for other YouTube channels as well. Um, whoops. And, um, yeah, close this. But again, you have the shell option here. If you want to use it, in a GUI web browser, you can still use this where there's no JavaScript if you don't want to use JavaScript. So if you have a plugin on your web browser that prevents a JavaScript from loading, or you just have JavaScript disabled, um, you can use my filmsychris.com forward slash shell to do that. You can use wget, you can use curl, you can use uh, wm3, links, uh, links, or links2, <laughs> spelt differently each time. Uh, but yeah. Those are the options. I set it up for you. I hope you appreciate it, because although it was not that much work to do, and I considered doing stuff like this, this is what I call doing it properly, to where you give those options. Uh, you give what I would consider a, a, a better option as far as searchability, viewability, but then also give you the option for the plain text and the limited code running on client side. It's all running on server side. Um, I'm giving you both options because it's not that hard to add that second option of shell access. It really isn't. But we have a lot to talk about today. And uh, so I hope you stick with me for a while. we got a couple hours at least. I'm going to go as long as I can. So keep watching. I appreciate you watching. Check out my website. You know, and uh, yeah, so what do we got going on next?